So I think when you look at something like this, you've got, you've got to look at not just the hotspot, but the potential impact to impact on other areas in the long run. Uh, just like I had a multi-time setback to you.
uh, as you've just outlined, we actually, um, the whole issue of payment for those parties has been a, a, a really interesting member of the over the past uh, few, few years. Um, we did actually bring a substantive report to what was the uh, former uh, Sustainable Communities Committee back in November 2012. And in that report, we drilled down into the issue of debt, and then there were a series of actions or recommendations that, uh, that came out of that. Um, I think we are just to uh, really just to, to start contacting. First of all, uh, in terms of if we get into any detail questions and technical detail, I've brought my uh, my two key managers here. I'm pretty certain all of you will will, will know here uh, who have really been responsible for leading on a lot of this work. So. Uh, Dave Reese on the left, who is the council's road safety manager, and then uh, Sean Brady on the right, who is the council's highway asset manager. They very much all the people who to be taking this body of work forward over, certainly over the group of the last six, seven, eight years or so. Um, so I think really, um, as members are aware, this, this can be uh, quite a, a, a contentious issue um, by its very nature, and we do get many inquiries and issues but it is actually a complex issue which has actually presented its challenges and uh, one of the things that I think we are very keen to do is to just highlight for example that we have a whole series of uh, very narrow residential streets for instance on the northern five areas where the residents that live in those streets the houses were built before uh, you know before the motor car there is very limited or no uh, off-street parking, and very often we'll have people living in those areas that, you know, take a, a pragmatic approach of parking part along uh, footways, pavements, and part on the road, uh, because these roads are so narrow, and uh, you know, to do anything that's really would be causing uh, an obstruction to the larger vehicles that go through, particularly like in one of the and things like that. So, in terms of Policy approach the way forward. You know there are quite a, a whole series of you know fairly complex issues here, uh, which do have significant impact on local residents. Um, and it's also worth highlighting that particularly those uh, residents that do the school and the children as well, we do actually have quite a few pending parking issues actually pending around, uh, around school. Just uh, just in terms of the law, so running through the report, uh, some of the key aspects of that are summarised in paragraphs 2, 6 and 2, 7. Uh, and I think as many members will recall when we've discussed these issues at length in the past, the broad premise is that if we have a traffic order in place, so if we have the other lines or the ships next to out there on the ground, that is the time when the council's uh, parking enforcement board is when they can actually take action in situations like that. But in many occasions, it, it's actually down to the police who are the key uh, enforcement body on issues such as this. And I think many of you will be aware that actually even the enforcement side of the police is actually a complex area, and we get into all kinds of issues as to whether a particular offence is witnessed, whether the vehicle is actually seen entering or not the footway or not. And then in terms of an absolute enforcement view around whether something constitutes an obstruction or not, again, this is a complicated area. And unless there is a very clear full obstruction, individual police officers, police constables, know that when we get these matters to court, very often that won't necessarily uh, result in a successful prosecution. So again, you know, quite a complex issue, certainly from a police enforcement. What we, but we have taken a practical approach over the past few years, and um, certainly uh, on Sean Brady's side of the business, as we outlined there in 2.8, the council has introduced uh, a number of pilot version pavement parking schemes around the board, where we actually put traffic board in place. And in general, they've actually been successful. They have actually been well respected by the members, as you've said there, and we have actually uh, we have actually had good compliance, so we've had some successes there. Members may recall that before that November 2012 report, we had done some work, I think particularly with the 
And that's fair in it, taking into consideration the different circumstances that we're in the financial point of view. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chair, very much indeed. As many of you will be aware, I've been following this up for about three years now, achieving my own share of the Sustainable Community Committee. And I must say, I have to welcome the photograph. I've put this on the screen, but frankly, I can't put it anywhere to be on at the moment. That photograph of Harry Price, uh, Harry, I'm um, saying, doing the um, situation where he um, showed the problems of putting stickers up to people's cars who were causing major obstruction. Well, that did help. And the press release that came out on the, 9th, on the 18th of July last year did also enhance things for a while. And as you will know, I kept this next to my heart in my wallet. These are the tickets that we were supposed to put under the windscreen of the pending car. So that was a good idea. In my opinion, we've lost the way, we've lost the emphasis on it completely and it's no longer being um, managed and uh, controlled in the way that I believe it should be. Within the last three days, and I've already shown very brief this information, that, for instance, on a wide promenade at Mellon, is two cars, two cars, not one, parked right across a pavement when the road is probably 30, 40 feet wide. There's absolutely no reason why anybody needs to do that. I fully accept, Mark, your argument about narrow streets where people need to park on the pavement. I have no problem with that because cars do not damage the pavement. It's an abandoned vehicle that people work in the industry, provided the cars leave a gap between themselves and the fence or the garden wall of the house for people to get through the disability chairs or push chairs or whatever. I don't have a major problem with that. I do have a problem with that, but that is just abuse of the situation. That particular road is parked regularly with two or three or four cars on it, or even people doing work on the road, installing bigger blazing windows, packs, whatever. And there's absolutely no reason for it. Not only is the car out of our pavement blocked, they are cracked and they're covered with oil because of vehicles dripping onto the pavement. So anybody walking in that area, it hasn't just got dog dirt on the it's got oil on the feet. That was taken two days ago. This one was taken on the main road at 10 o'clock this morning. Again, another car on the front of the house parked on the pavement. I'm going to put those on the screen that I'm not able to. Talking about damage, here's one for you. Taken on Saturday morning. That is a house in Dog Point Road. We all know where it is, there's no question of being able to find the guy. That is somebody transporting materials across the grass verge into the drive of the house where it's been initially rolled. That grass verge from end to end for about 50 feet has got five inch ruts in it. It will never be repaired. Nobody's made any attempt to reinstate it. That is a problem that needs picking up. It's on Dog Point Road. I can't tell you the house is not going to identify. But somebody should go down there and send them for a bill for doing that. That's just absolutely unacceptable vandalism. It's just awful. And that is happening all over the place. I should have declared an interest in the sense that I came and need to use an mobility scooter. And having done that, in West Kirby and Wyoming in particular, the points you made, Jerry, are just as bad there when you have Tesco vehicles, Sainsbury vehicles, police vehicles. I've got photographs of getting that report. The police vehicles are all over the place. And when you ask them why, they say, oh, I can park anywhere. No, you can't. It's against the law. And finally, the question about catching people parking on the pavement. It's in fact an offence to drive onto the pavement. It is not an offence to be on the pavement. So the answer is to have a bylaw which prosecutes the owner of the car whose car is on the pavement. Because at some stage, either he or somebody under his direction must have driven in there. We can easily introduce a bylaw that says any car, vehicles parked on the pavement can be dropped out by getting to the DLC and getting the ownership and saying, well, you may not have driven it on, but you are responsible for that car. You are the one who needs prosecution for having got it in there in the first place. Now, I've got, I won't go on anymore, but I feel very, very, very strongly about this for two reasons. The obstructions, not just to me, but people like me who need to get between cars without going into the road. And two, I'm absolutely appalled at the damage that's caused to council properties, which we all have to play through our council tax. And I do not believe at the moment, I know that they just on this, and I think they agree for all that he's done, I'm sure, what they've done so far. I just don't think it's going ahead fast enough. I do not think we're dealing with these issues, this particular one on the other promenade. They've been doing that for a year and a half in my mind. Nobody has put a sticker on the learning issue. Nobody has been down to them and told them that they're breaking the law. 
And believe me, it decimated. Because one time it was one car occasionally. Now it's two or three cars in that area outside the same house regularly. 10 or 12 cars parked on the pavement a lot of the time. And four days ago, somebody was doing double glazing with the van parked on the pavement and they were using the pavement area of the workshop to cut up and put as it said. It's not acceptable. And something needs to be done about it. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Look, looking at uh, the leaders that I've introduced, now I will agree with everything being said, that this, this parking is absolutely silly, but I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a little story which may or may not help you. I work for a very big motor company in Air Wolf, and the Elgin Ring Road is forever getting double parking. And what they do, they actually got plastic stickers, like that, stuck it on the windscreen, actually stuck it on the windscreen, it took you 10 or 15 minutes to scrape it off, and you still had a little tiny filament in front of you. Now, if you popped there once and it was falling rain and it took you 10 or 15 minutes, you didn't park there again. And I would suggest this may well be a part of letting people know and letting it sink in a little bit, you should not park there. Thank you, Jeff. Um, I welcome the, the I think a big problem with the enforcement for the council. 